Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the ILFL podcast, episode two. Um, thank you for listening to our previous one, and I hope you also enjoy this one as well. Um, I want to introduce you to the team today. First of all, I want you to introduce Mabs again. Hello, Hello everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we've also got Tawid as well. Hi there. Tao, do you want to just um, give us a brief description of what you do? Uh, at the moment, uh, I'm covering Super 7, uh, coordinator with, uh, after Hussein Bai. So, that's how it is. And you also do TVL as well, don't you? So I do events on TVL. Thursday as well, mm. and then I was, like, helping out the rest of the boys to set up the goals and stuff like that. And we've also got Mizan as well. Hello, Miz. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Good, good. Um, what do you do, Miss, for the ILFL, by the way? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm there on the Vets League. Uh, I do the fixtures. Uh, I'm the fixture secretary, plus I help out the team on Thursday, uh, our committee team, setting up the pitches and stuff. Okay, and we've also got Kalsa as well. Hello, Kalsa. Welcome. Hello, everyone. How you all doing? Good, 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 good. Um, do you want to just give us an introduction of what you do as well, Kalsa? Yeah, so I'm the coordinator of the 40 Plus, um, and I also help out with the TVL on Thursdays. Thank you. Um, so we're just going to ex- um, give the topics of discussion today. So we're going to today discuss the Super 7 League, also the 40s, um, our usual TVL and 11 aside. Um, we'll also be touching on our award ceremony, something very interesting to look forward to as well. So we'll dive straight into it today um, and discuss Can the I Super 7. What yeah, we, what's the uh, menu on the award ceremony? The menu is going yeah, to be... I think that's what uh, everyone's trying to... That's, that's, like, that's, that's the thing, most important thing, really. <laughs> Forget the trophies. Forget the tea. It's just the, what's the food? I totally agree. And it's going to be something very spicy. That's all I can give you for now. Ooh, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 tasty. Hey, <laughs> sound tasty. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, let's get started with Super 7. So, currently, um, we've got three divisions. Um, T, you sort of like run a bit of that. So, I will try to give it a brief sort of like structure on it. Um, three divisions... Prem, first and second division. Yeah. Um, there's seven teams in each division, okay. totaling up to 21 teams. Yeah. This is our fifth season, isn't it, I believe? Yes, it is fifth season. Um, basically, we started with like one division first and then demand was going on and started, went for second. And this year, like a lot of youngsters wanted to come and play their football. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we, we went for three division, you know, and there's a lot of popular players want to come and join us and continue with it. I mean, the, the, one of the good things I really love about the Super 7s is the pace and the quality of That's the football. That's exactly what I was going to actually say. You know, the, uh, I've been there quite a few times uh, to Stepney Green, where this, uh, Stepney Green National, where this takes place. And I've got to say, the, the pace of, this, of the game, it's not just the pace, I think it's also the skills some of these youngsters are displaying. It's Phenomenal, honestly. If if anyone's got any spare time and just you know spare time to kill, just come down. You're going to be entertained. Sure, honestly, it's end to end stuff. It's relentless. Watching these youngsters, these are like 16, 17 year olds, like not even at their peak yet. Uh, and watching them, like from end to end, I watch them. I stand there and I think, damn, I'm tired just watching them play. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I still remember there was this uh, one game. I was just just happened to walk into the uh, Stepney Green National Turf, and um, I think it was Azuri. Uh, really nice bunch of lads and uh, it started off with the goalkeeper giving it to the I think left back left back straight to the winger winger uh, shifts it to the midfield Midf- midfield on the first touch gives it to the striker striker takes position doesn't even think about it just lobs the keeper from there yeah. from it was just <laughs> honestly it was such quick football and it was such a nice game to watch as yeah. well he's, he's like he knew where the goal was straight away and straight away. but how are you finding it like actually going because you obviously you, you're managing quite a bit on that side with of course with Hussein Bay who's not here unfortunately tonight yeah. but how are you finding it with? oh no it's good I find it quite good like yeah. every every team and the managers knew mm. knows me by now and yeah. then they get to come on to me and a lot of team like asking for like they want a second team right they, so there's still they, more demand for there's more demand it's like three divisions wow when it's when it's like one team come up to us goes, oh, I want another team. Can you get another division mm. and stuff like that? A lot of youngsters are coming out because the a lot of talent they got. Yeah. I think what it is with that as well because it's open age, Super Sevens open age. As much as you've got a lot of youngsters in those in that division, you've also got slightly sort of experienced players as well. You see how I didn't use the word old. 
<laughs> but it's an experience. We'll come to old later. <laughs> yeah. Experienced players, and I think that gives a nice balance. I think the other the other thing as well, which I really really like about the Super Sevens, where is the atmosphere as well. Mm. You've mm. got that kind of yeah. it's like the raw atmosphere yeah. when players are scoring goals, the yeah. celebration from the sidelines, the yeah. all the art. Yeah, when in that, for example, the spectators are here. They're actually not supporting the one team. Whoever scores, they're supporting the both team. When they score, they're like they're supporting that goal. Yeah, you got the goal. Try to win it, or sometimes they say, "Oh, you just got the goal. Go and get the goal back." And when they score, like wicked goals, the entire spectator just jumps and. Saying oh, what a goal and stuff like that. And I'm sure there's lots of sort of like quality yeah. goals. So you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, a lot of teams yeah. actually film. Yeah, they yeah. Do. I, guess what, I guess that's a testament to the quality on display. I right? see. Yeah, um, definitely. Because even even listen to some of the interviews. Of, yeah. Um, you know the team managers and players. It's quite evident that yeah, the quality is there. Because some some teams cover the expectation that yeah they'll come in here and then absolutely smash it, and, it's, and then it's actually, yeah, once they actually play, yeah. you think wow. It's a yeah. real reality show. Yeah, it is. Um, one of the one of the promising things about this this project is that it's fast growing. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of demand for it. So if there is anybody out there who is looking who I should say who has a team and do want to enter, please, please do contact one of the ILFL representatives or the person in charge is Hussein who can you can get through to from our website as well. So please, please do actually contact us and come forward with your details and we're more than happy to cater for you guys as well. Yeah. I mean, um, talking about the divisions, it's really, really early days yet at the moment. So I think it's probably hard to actually predict unless, T, you've got anyone sort of like special that <gasps> you think that is going to really do well? Oh, no, no. This is, at the moment, it's early stage, you know. But the way I look at it, it's like one team is getting to me or two team is one is uh, Crystal Palestine and the other one Champion of East. They're my, they're my favourite because obviously Crystal Palestine won the league cup mm. last season and they look very strong and they changed some players around. Mm. And the two, they're talking, when I asked one of the managers and the player, what do you think I, uh, you're going to do? I said, oh, no, we want to win and we're going to go like unbeaten this season. We won't win the league by unbeaten. I think they were in the cup final as well. They, were, they actually won it. They won it, yeah. They won it. Yeah, that yeah, that yeah. cup final was a wicked game, yeah. you know, end to end. And it, it, is there any players that stand out at the moment, even from the first two, three games? Um, yeah, but I forgot his name uh, last week, yesterday or wherever I asked his name and I forgot about it. But he's a really, really good player. Yeah. You know, and... I mean, one of the players I do like as well, I think we touched on Azuri as well, Shazad Mia Shaz. I mean, I'm just looking at the goal scorers, top goal scorers, and um, the top goal scorer is um, Helder. Well, there's, there's, there's about three players with top goal scorers joined with three goals. But Shaz is um, just one goal behind. Um, he plays for Azuri, and I highly rate him as a player. The guy's got energy, he's pacey, good finisher. I wouldn't be surprised to see him up there. Is you know probably getting the golden boot. Yeah, two, yeah. Well, two, two goals in one game. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty yeah, impressive. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, Zori yeah. just below mid table as well. So you know, yeah. they always say the hardest thing is to score goals, isn't it? And yeah. if you've got a good goal scorer, well, that, that should make it easy. Um, let's have a quick, quick um, first division. Um, so in the first division, I mean, you got Burdett who's won two games and drawn one game top of the um, table with um, Blackpool just behind them. So again, the, this division, I mean, it's going to be very, very tight. I mean, you know, it's it's going to change continuously throughout the, the season. So it's still early days for us to call it, but maybe, you know, on our sort of like third or fourth podcast, we might be able to um, get some more sort of like idea. Yeah, well, obviously you can see on the first division you've got four new teams just joined us. Obviously, like for example, London Kings, Blackwell and Brodeur, they already knew they played. So they do look the favourites. So obviously, the other, other four teams who joined us on that division, it's like they, they get to know how they play and each other. It's, it's, it's also very nice as well, the fact that Camden Panthers, they've got a team in there, yeah. they've got a team in other projects. Yeah, they're, they're, well, they're, they're, they're Camden Panthers, they've got like a Vets League they play in and they're all good. Camden Panthers players, which is, is the first time they actually played together, they never played with each other. Mm. So they joked about, but when I saw them on the first game, 
they were really good. They knew what they're doing. I was like, they they were playing years years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to quickly jump onto the second division as well. Again, um, a couple of new teams as well in there as well. For example, the London Absa as well. Now, London Absa has been, have been around for quite a mm, while, it's haven't they? It's yeah. a very established yeah, yeah. team. And it's really nice to see these guys in there as well. Um, London Kings, um, very surprised to be at the bottom of the table, but I'm sure they'll sort of fight their way up. Valence, another one as well, very established team as well. Um, so, yeah, the Super 7 is very exciting stuff, I think. Um, looking forward to next week, Monday, yep. yeah. um, going there. So if anyone's free to see some attacking, exciting, you know, action-packed football, you know, please do. I'm, you know, I, I might need to make some time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should come on, come on, see. You know, you, you know what it is? Because I'm looking at the table, and when you're looking at the goal fours for each of the teams, there's a lot of goals that get Yeah, scored. I'm it's telling you, really, really honestly, exciting, honestly, lads, it's end-to-end -end stuff. Yeah, yeah. It really That's is. Great. No, it's like a lot of pace. Not like the Vex or the mm -hmm. other, other division sure. league. Because these youngsters, they've got the energy to run up and down. And they want to win, win the game. And the tackle, you, if you see the tackle they do, it's like... You must be like saying, oh, why is he tackling like this? Mm -hmm. But the tackle they do and the skills they do, it's uh, wicked to watch. You know, it's breathtaking. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Should we discuss the next project, um, which is the 40s? Um, now, the 40s has actually come to a conclusion now, hasn't it? And yeah. we've got Casa, who's sort of in charge of the 40s. Um, what's your thoughts on the, the season, Kaus? Um It was a... Well, it came to the last couple of weeks before we could work out the champions and congratulate St. Catharines for winning the league this season. Um, I believe they've, this is the first time they've won it. Um, they've been around for a good few seasons now. Um, previously, uh, Hawken Eagle have taken it, previously named London Tigers, but congratulations to St. Catharines, who fought hard this season. Um, a lot of, couple of games where they literally scored last minute goals, um, which literally <coughs> took them to the top. Um, and yeah, they've been really well. I must say um, that St. Catharines if you put if you was a betting man and said St Catharines, you probably lose a lot of money. Or the odds were probably really really low. Looking at this division, um, Hawk and Eagle and Majestics are probably the two favourite teams mm. that are probably out of this, and even possibly Golden Moon, who actually held themselves as well. Mm. So to see, it's a, it's a huge achievement for St Catharines. You know what they've done really well. Uh, the lads have, uh, and a couple of special mentions like, for example, Imru Ghazi, uh, Jalal. Uh, Hanif, who's been around with St. Catherine's for a little while now, uh, Abdul Hassan, these guys, they, they've done really well. Um, Can I just say about Abdul Hassan, he was yeah. the top goal scorer okay. of, the di of the division uh, with yeah. 11 goals. Wow. Yeah. wow, that's that is you know what, yeah. as much as people think it's a 40s vets, how, how intense can it be and stuff, you know, it's not just about that, it's, it's the fact that these are experienced players, these guys are the guys that actually really really not not taking anything away from any other sort of projects that we do but with the 40s it's uh it's experience it's a lot of experience and to get that many goals fantastic yeah. fantastic but i think with the boys uh generally they've done really well st catherine's uh generally done really well like you said they weren't really favorites but you know what they proved everyone wrong went there won it upset the big boys like hawk and eagle up the gate uh you know upset them one <laughs> ended up winning. I think with the game game uh, left to play, wasn't one it? Game that, yeah, one left to play. They, they were crowned champions. Mm -hmm. Fantastic achievement. Going back to that, what you were doing, saying Abdul Hassan, goal again in the, in, in the fourth. And the thing I was, I was going to touch what you, you were just saying, Miz, as well, is that the competitiveness is really there as well. There's yep. a big, massive age. Yep. You would <clears> think <throat> to ourselves that at the age of 40, you, you've been <laughs> around the block. Yeah. Saying, would, you know, would you say the last couple of seasons have been... Just a level more competitive. Definitely. Yeah. I think where you've got quite a few players who've just turned 40 and stuff. Yeah. So that competitiveness, that, that, uh, the energy levels are still there. And don't forget the 40s vets uh, in Stepney, you're playing on a, a pitch that's not as big as the Thursday mm -hmm. Vets League and mm -hmm. obviously nowhere near big as the 11 sides. sides yeah. mm -hmm. But it's just, it's knowing like, how to keep the ball, play quick football, it's, it's just, it's amazing. It's, 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 it's like that when you look at intelligence football yes. for elderly mm -hmm. yes. um, with the actual brains, but you think that it's going to be slow paced, but it's not, not slow it's paced. Not, it's at not, all. it's not, you know. When, when I when the first time to see the 40s and I thought, oh, it might be a slower than uh, the Vetsley, 
35. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then when I saw like, the players like pace, they go and stuff like that. Are they really in 40s? <laughs> uh, am I just coming into the vets? Uh? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, um, again, a massive congratulations. Unlucky to Hawk and Eagle as well, and Majestic. Like I said, I thought personally that at the beginning they were favourites. So, you know, and um, again, many congratulations to Abdul Hassan and St. Catherine's for their achievements. For yeah. The yeah, generally, all the boys in uh, St. Catherine's have done really well. Um, I, I think there's, um, there's only one division. I mean, I foresee we do want to grow it. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, you know, going It's just forward. a matter of getting the venue, isn't it? Really yeah. and truly. And that's, uh, it's a challenge. Yeah. It's a real challenge, especially uh, in East London, trying to find sort of the space. Um, AstroTurf, sort of decent quality yeah. AstroTurf mm-hmm. places. It's getting the space. Um, you know, we yeah. are still looking out. There is, there is a high demand for there it. There is a very high demand. Very high demand. There's a lot That's of right. teams. A lot yeah, of teams. yeah, I think a lot of teams are waiting on the waiting so list as I, well. I recently had um, our teams from our Vets League asking to enter the 40 plus, and I was like, oh, there's a waiting list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's funny how as you get older, you're sort of like more attracted to football <laughs> as opposed yeah, to the yeah, opposite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Obviously, uh, they want to stay healthy, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the only thing is I'm not sure about the wives, though. <laughs> 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 but you said it's a great initiative, though, isn't it? It uh, is. At least this is keeping us active and fit. Yeah, yeah, if you think yeah. about the generations before us, 100%. They, they didn't have this at, yeah. at this level anyway. Obviously, there's always thought by the younger age. When you're 35, when you're 40, it's not like what it is now. And yeah. you know what, man, you've touched up on a really good thing because yeah. I think, you know what, what would you have been doing uh, if, if, for example, the 35s vets didn't exist, the 40s vets, even yeah. to some extent the uh, uh, older sort of like, what would you have been doing? Really and truly, what would you have been doing? You would have been just at home right. maybe or maybe working, so, you know. It, this this is great, you know. It gets you out, active, uh, and one of the one of the biggest things is like you you're socialising as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? It's it's fantastic. But yeah. keeping active, like you said, keeping active is really key, mm. especially at the old age. You know, and a lot of people when you get old, you just sit mop around, you know, sit on your couch watching TV. But yeah. we're encouraging them to play. And and Kelsey, you know that's that's a really good point because it's not it's not just about the physical. Um, you know, well being mm-hmm. mentally as well. You of need course. to be involved in stuff, keep yourself active. Because yep. in, in our community as well, there's a lot of issues. And in a way, I mean, if we have something like that, it helps. It definitely helps. Definitely. So, yeah, no, this is. Yeah, let's long, long may it continue. And hopefully, you know, yeah. we, we should have. We, we, we did have a 50s. Um, unfortunately, we haven't got the space, but that might actually come yeah. back. So, yeah. watch this space. Um, so now we're going to go on to our most enjoyable topic, um, which is our <laughs> first day <laughs> <vets. laughs> <laughs> First day bets. <laughs> yes. So we'll start with the Premiership. Yep. Yeah. Um, a massive, massive congratulations to Shoredge. Ooh, it's, um, it's, it's, it's still it's you know what it is it's not yet done yeah it's, it's, it's I think it depends on uh, Walthamstow yeah Walthamstow it depends on Walthamstow my apologies, yeah. My apologies. Yeah. to be honest um, I think um, just what it is uh, this Thursday uh, I believe Shoreditch are off yeah. uh, but Walthamstow are playing so if I think Walthamstow lose I'm not saying they should, but you know, just saying if Wolfram so happen to lose, then Shoreditch get crowned champions uh, and so forth. But so it's still got a couple of more games to go. But I think one of the things we can touch up on here is about Shoreditch generally. It, I think at the beginning of the season, did we expect it? Did we not? You know what I'm saying? Because Shoreditch were in the, Shoreditch have been in the prayer for a couple of seasons now, a few seasons now. And this is by far one of the best seasons they've had. They, they had a brilliant run. run they of had wins. 100%. Uh, until the recent un, un, Until years. recently, yeah. yeah. They were on a... Uh, what was it? A, uh, they weren't losing any games. They hadn't lost any games until only just recently. And I honestly thought they were going to go for the whole thing, for like the whole se- season unbeaten. Well, well uh, talking about unbeaten, I, I was talking and saying I was, if I was a betting man, I was going to put a money on shortage to go if unbeaten. If you were a betting man. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. But luckily, if you, if luckily if I you were a betting man. man. <laughs> well, well, I actually said in our last podcast, I actually was surprised because I didn't think they, they will struggle to make it over line because yeah. the, the problem with shortage is they have a great start. They mm. have a good sort of like in between. Yeah. But sort of like every year, coming to the end of the season, they sort of like fade away a bit. Yeah. I think one of the biggest things they have had at this, uh, this season at their disposal is the, uh, the squad. 
Uh, and you know what? It's one of the things that's really important is in a squad is having like for like replacements, yeah. Yeah, yeah, subs. Yeah. I'm talking about here. Yeah. So, uh, for example, if you've got a quality midfielder, he goes off. On comes another quality midfielder. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if uh, for uh, let's just quickly throw some name in there. For example, uh, Shoreditch, uh, say uh, the attacking player Schumann. Yeah, if he goes off, Schumann can't. If he goes off, yeah, uh, Nelson comes on. Or Nelson goes off, Schumann comes on. Shah, another one to mention. It's like for like replacements. Uh, another one is their goalkeeper uh, Abdul. Oh my God! Some of the saves is made. Absolutely, even the last game. Um, absolutely outstanding saves. Some of the ones that he's made, is you think there's no way he's got he's got him saved that and boom, pulls it out the bag just like that. So it's it's interesting you say that because because I think they've also the what it also allows them to do as well is establish themselves for the next couple of seasons. Hundred percent, yeah. Competitive. You know what it is? It's just a matter of keeping that squad together. Mm -hmm. It's re you know, and that as everyone knows is hard. It is hard, <laughs> but I think they've got a good unity in that team. Uh, you know, all the boys seem to get on with each other and stuff. So I think that's one of the foundations they've laid already. And I think that's going to keep on going, hopefully. Yeah. Now, looking at the bottom of the table, I mean, I was sort of like raving about Golden Moon last time, um, thinking that they would be sort of like very competitive, but they've sort of like dipped in form. They have, yeah. Um, the team that I did say was going to be all right. Yeah. Cameron Bounds. Yeah. I, I told you they were yeah. fine. Yeah, they, 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 they look obviously picked up points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Weaver's still struggling, um, mm. which is a very it, surprising. It was. I'll, I'll be honest with <clears> you, I'm very, very surprised with that one. Very surprised with that one. But they, then again, to be honest, I was surprised because Bowman were in that sort of funk as well, weren't they? Mm. Really? Yeah, they were second yeah. from bottom. And that was it. Bottom, yeah. Very surprised. They got out of it, yeah. 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 So um, it's, it's interesting because, I mean, bottom three teams, I mean, you know, they are quality teams, mm, you know. They are, you know, they, they are even championship winning teams as well. And for you, them to you be just, there, you wouldn't expect it at no, all at the beginning no. of the season. No way. But it, I, I mean, it, just looking at looking at this season, for example, a Premiership. I will guarantee you, well, pretty much next season, it's just going to be a mix up completely again, mm. because on their day, every team could beat each other. Hundred really. um, percent. So that's what makes this Premiership yeah, yeah, so exciting. Mm, yeah. um, and again, we're talking about, for example, you know, um, the Super 7s. This division here has quality in it as well. Mm. I mean, when you see the level of football and the experience for this, it's superb. Yeah. With, a, with a much bigger pitch as well. So, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of exciting young just 35s that are coming in as well, which yeah. is really lighting up the place. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. Agreed. I mean, first division, what's your thoughts on first? First division, well, I, I'm going to... Still, probably stick with all stars. They they got a game in hand, mm -hmm. level on points. Yeah, you know, and it's their goals against. Yeah, only conceded two. Ooh, yeah, you know that's they've played really nine games and only conceded two. That's really good defense. Yeah. It's yeah. defense yeah. goalkeeper. Solid. You know the players in general is just yeah. wow. Solid. Two yeah. two two, yeah. two goals conceded. That's that's in after nine games. That's, that's, that's right. Right. Yeah. achievement. Yeah. And Clapton, mm. Clapton, I mean Clapton are a good team. Clapton are a very good team. Especially in the cup yeah. one last last season, yeah. what they did is. Really fantastic. Yeah, and getting to the finals as well. Yeah, they just grow well, with from team. strength to strength, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Really, and they're, they're, it's like a conveyor belt for their their yeah. team as well. Yeah. They're just producing like quality yeah. players. It's really really good. One of my favorite teams, ELS, uh, mid table. Um, again on their day, top team. Um, but that's the thing. When do they bring their best day? You know, performance. You know, not every week. That's the only downside. I yeah, suppose when they have good players around. Yeah, yeah, and I totally agree. Um, so yeah, I mean, Sire, uh, one of our teams. Can we, uh, can we just introduce Harris? As, as yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's just come yeah, he's just come to late, late, late as per usual, but yeah, he's yeah. turned up. He's just yeah. turned up now. Um, Welcome, Harris. Yeah, I just want to quickly go back to uh, Clapton All Stars. Just wanted to mention a couple of players who, again, uh, I've had the pleasure of watching. You know, coming coming Thursdays and watching uh, players such as uh, Hamza Patel. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. phenomenal. And funny thing is, uh, a few weeks back, I asked him uh, if he was 40, trying to get him into one of the 40 <laughs> teams. And he gave me this look to say, Do I really look that old? <laughs> Turned out he was quite a few years off. Uh, so naturally, I played you off and I blamed one of the other guys. I said, He told me you're 40, not me. He told me you're 40. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, another player is uh, Mo Mohammed, oh, yes. the striker, phenomenal. Really, and you know what the thing is with these guys that it's not just about the football they're generally really nice guy yeah, really nice guy he's really pleasant to talk to as well 
The other thing touching on Mo is, is yeah. his age as well. Mo is... You know what? You, you, any, any decent defender that's up against him and thinks, you know what? Ah, you know what? I'll have him. No problem. He ain't going to get past me. Think again, guys. Honestly, mm. the intelligence of this guy. Yeah, yeah. Holding the ball, running past play. It's just really on another level, honestly. Yeah. No, he's a very quality player and, you know, much love to <clears throat> how he looks after himself. For his age, he's mm. absolutely really, really good player. That's right, yeah. Um, so going to... So we're not going to call... Well, we're going to call All-Stars um, yeah. on the first. Um, going to the second division. I mean, we did say Mohammed in the last um, to our podcast as well. Yeah. Um, they're just edging it over Docklands, but Docklands are looking good as well. Oh, they've had a great run. Yeah. There's that, still what that two is, games to play, isn't yeah, there? That's yeah. a tight yeah. round. This very tight way. Way. Anyone want to call it? I think uh, Docklands uh, might just take I, it. I don't know. It's a tough one. That they, one. It's well, a, it, they are. You know, the thing is, both of these teams have been uh, consistent. Yes, they've been really consistent. Uh, Mohammed and even when they're not playing great, they'll get yeah, a result. They, they just know how to win. They do. They do. You see, and uh, if you look at it, they've only lost one game. Um, yeah, uh, it's tough. I'll, I'll still and again, it's the one goals one. against. Yeah. Look at that. It's only five goals they've yeah. conceded and as well. And, and, and they've got Crazy. probably arguably the best player as well, Mahmoud, and, um, in Sadiq as well. Oh, he's what a quality player he is. He's, he, he, you know, if you if you want to just watch enjoyable football, just watch him play. He, he, way he dribbles with a ball. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and just going back to it, like, I think this week, uh, is it this week? Sorry, let me just have a quick look at something. Um, so you've still got Mohammed to play against Poplar. Yeah, uh, yeah. You've still got Mohammed to play against Hawk and Eagle B. Mm-hmm. Um, not taking anything away from Hawk and B at all um, and not being disrespectful to anyone. But you would think Mohammed are favourites to against Hawk and Eagle B. Poplar might be a bit tricky as they're in third place. Um, in terms of Docklands, their couple of games, I think they've got uh, Atletico Bengal. Uh, I think that's an easy win. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see you next. <laughs> and uh, Riverside, and you'd fancy them winning against Riverside. Yeah. Uh, Riverside, bottom of the league. Again, no, uh, no disrespect, but it's bottom of the league versus pretty much one of the top uh, teams in the top of the league. It's uh, you know it's pretty predictable that one. But again, on the on the on the night, you don't know. Yeah, on you the just night, don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Well, yeah. it might just play it all out yeah. just to win mm-hmm. it if you kill or lose it. Um, what's our force on the first third division, then, boys? Stepney, Stepney, Wapping. Ooh. That's a, you know what? I'm surprised with East London Kings because they were up there. They were up there for a good while, yeah. um, and Stepney weren't really there. And Stepney made a last minute surge, and now they're up there. They're on top of the table. Again, look at Stepney defense. Yeah. I only conceded four, four goals. Get four goals. Yeah, Stepney, Wapping. Oh, that's a close one. I yeah. think this is going to go down to the wire, this one is. Yeah, well, we've got Big Russ playing for Stepney at the back. Yes. So he's, he's, absolutely, um, he's absolutely phenomenal player. Yeah. Um, he's been around for quite a while. And um, he's, um, yeah, he, he's still got it. Um, and he's sort of like dictating and controlling that back of his That's right. defence. So, um, yeah, I mean, what are we saying? 70 for this one? Uh, uh, no, nah, I'll say it's going to go to the last game. But who would you call it? Who I'll would say you Stephanie. Call? You'd say Stephanie? It's part of the defence, yeah. It is a tough one, isn't it? It, it is. is. It is a tough one it's to call. It, it doesn't matter if it's a defence or... It's exciting yeah. end to the season. It is, it is. Yeah. You know what? They've only watch. lost one yeah. game yeah. this season. Yeah, I don't Definitely. know. Definitely. Well, I ha- come back and tell me of the last game. <laughs> <laughs> no, no but say you had to call one. Say you had to call one. Who would you call? One point behind, so... Have they still got games? Say, say no. you had to call it's one, nice. who would you call? <coughs> Two games to play still. Uh, yeah, I might say Stepney, but uh, like I said, I'm not saying it now, but... <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm just going on the goals conceded. <laughs> yeah. it, it, don't be scared. No, <laughs> 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 yeah, go on. Uh, if I have to um, pick one, I'd say Stepney. You'd say Stepney? Yeah. yeah. But you know might be wrong. Wapi might just go for it and Stepney might end up losing the last game. Well, let's see. Look, look. At the end of the day, Stepney have got to play uh, Camden Panthers B. Oh, no, that's... A... And Shoreditch Vets B. Uh, in regards to Wapping, they've got to play... Um, Wapping have got to play Shoreditch B and Eastside. I've got a tough game against Shoreditch B. <laughs> uh, East Side are no pushovers either. Absolutely. No, they're not. Yeah, yeah. East are not no pushovers either. Yeah. They're, they're a tough team yeah, to beat as well. Tough, yeah. I, I actually thought East Side would be up there. I, I, I did as well. When, you, when you actually see yeah. the level of football, baby, yeah. mm. it's, it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, so let's go to the final division. 
Um, and I believe, I think it's done. It's, it's done, done yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. done. Final division. So congratulations to Gansill oh, um, for winning the fourth division. So I know there's a couple of more games um, sort of like left in that division. Who do, you th do we think will be runners up then? Um, <clears throat> so according to the table, obviously, uh, Mohammed and I are sitting in second place with a game in hand. With a game mm -hmm. in hand. Uh, Following closely is El Maris, mm -hmm. uh, with 16 points, a point behind, but they've played a game more. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Uh, again, it's, it's, I think, I would say Mohammed and Vets B. The reason I say that is because I think they've got the personnel in the sense from, if they wanted to, get a couple of the A-teamers mm -hmm. and uh, bolster the squad, if they really wanted to have a strong finish towards the end. So I think I'm leaning towards Mohammed and B for the second place finish. I I I'll have to go with you as well. I, yeah, I mean Mohammed. I I I do want to say sort of something about El Maris Fair new club. Yes, and no, definitely them, for, for them. Yeah, to be up there, okay. new club, first season playing in the Vets League, and you know what it is. Another thing probably to touch up there on is like the, with the Vets League where it's thirty five plus, you get a lot of eleven aside players that have played obviously all their years and stuff on eleven aside and have now turn 35 and want to sort of like come and play in the Vets League. And this is for a lot of people that come into the Vets scene fresh. Mm -hmm. And they think, you know what, well, I've played 11 side at the peak of my level, I'm at the highest level and stuff. And they think, yeah, no problem. It's a different game. It yeah. is a completely different ball game. I mean, we, we played a friendly against um, El Maurice at yeah. the start of the season yeah. and you could tell the quality of their team mm. there. Um, I, I, I could see them growing, going up and up yeah, with the yeah, divisions. Yeah, they, they, you could tell that they've been playing together for a while. Mm -hmm. And obviously, this has been their first season in this league. They will get better. Yeah, they will yeah. get better. Next season will be stronger for them. So yeah. No. So again, I just want to say a big congratulations to Gans Hill. Well done, guys. Well, well done, well Gans. Done. Um, but, uh, have we looked at their? So, they played nine games. They haven't lost a game yet. So mm -hmm. three, three more to go unbeaten. Yeah, and they only conceded three goals. So that's yeah. a strong that's team. That's, 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 that's really well done. Yeah. Whoa, man, 39 goals scored. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow, that is. Amazing. That's a lot really good. Yeah. Um, I, um, I just want to find the, um, sort of like, before I go to our award ceremony, I just want to sort of like ask some requests, sort of our clubs, teams, managers, to pass on this message about just to, some basic housekeeping rules. Um, regarding sort of like on match days, so first thing is please, 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 can all teams, players, managers make sure that you do take your litter with you or sort of put it in your bins? Um, we have had a couple of complaints from sort of like the venues. Um, we want to host the football, we want you guys to enjoy the football, but you know, if the venues do get upset, you know, they can take it away from us. So, that's the one last thing we want them to do. So, please, please, if you can, just take your litter with you or put it in the bin. Um, the second thing as well is pitch entry times. Now, unfortunately, for the vets, um, we have other sort of like people doing sessions and playing training before our sort of session starts. So let's respect them. Um, we can't enter, unfortunately, until eight o'clock, bang on eight o'clock. Now we've got the league coordinators who, you know, run around doing the goals. If we can get teams to help, we would really much appreciate that. I think I just want to quickly say, uh, for a few teams that helped us, for example, last week, where we were really short of uh, people helping out in terms of the committee members, um, just want to say a big thank you to some of these teams that really helped us out um, setting up the goals. Like um, I think it was uh, Smarma, no problem. Uh, Shoreditch, no problem. Wapping, no problem. All these boys just jumped on it straight away. Didn't even think like, oh, why am I doing this? No, it's your job. None of that. They just went and done it. Um, so yeah, going forward, if you know, if everyone can just help out, as much as we're going to be there doing stuff, obviously, if you guys can also help out, just setting up the goals, you know, it just gets the kickoff time quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just helps out in that sort of sense. Um, yeah, so that's the housekeeping um, rules. Um, we're going to finally sort of finish on our award ceremony, which is going to be on November. Oh, sorry, I, I put my apologies. I forgot one more project, which is our 11 aside. Um, so the 11 aside we do on Sundays. Now, this is um, our sort of like biggest project. 
It's our bread and butter project. Um, we've got currently two divisions at the moment. Um, the season's underway. I believe there's about four or five games already being played and it's played at Hackney Marshes and Victoria Park. If you're free on a Sunday, please, please do go down there. Now, this is 11 side. This is the proper football, in my opinion. You know, if you want to play football uh, or if you want to be established as a footballer, you must be able to play 11 side, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to say, please do pop down there and play. We have, we'll, we will hopefully get some guests regarding the 11 side to come and talk to us about the divisions and how it's going and stuff like that. I just want to emphasise that, you know, the importance of our 11 side football. Just on the point of guests as well, it would be great for our listeners, um, if there are any team members, players, managers, whatever, if, you, if you would actually like to come on and uh, get involved in one of our podcasts, that would be great. Maybe ask you a few questions, get your perspective on how things are going. It would just be good to yeah. have that interaction. Yeah. yeah, please, please get in touch with us. And if you want to come down, you're more than welcome, guys. Please do come down. Um, yeah, so the last bit we just want to talk about before we sort of let in this is the award ceremony. So if you want to touch on that, Max. Yeah, so our <coughs> award ceremony is going to be uh, next Tuesday, the 8th of November. Uh, we're now into 21 years of IFL and counting. Um, things are going brilliant uh, over the last couple of years. The projects are getting bigger and bigger. And as mentioned previously, we, we have such high demands for the Super 7 projects, the teams waiting to get into the 40 plus and so on, also waiting this for uh, the 35 plus vets. So we are at a very good place in time at the moment and long may it continue. Um, and just to that point, you know, we, we want to say a big thank you to the team of volunteers um, that helped to manage the IDFL, uh, without them, none of them would be possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, special thanks to Miz, of course. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to brag about this. He, he, he handles yeah. everything, honestly. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, seriously, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Everyone gives their time and uh, effort to get things done. Um, so yeah, ne next week, Tuesday, it's a ceremony to celebrate the champions of each of the divisions. Um, we very much look forward to seeing everyone there. And um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Thank uh, you again, very much. Thank uh, you. Yeah, again, I just want to con um, sort of emphasise is for the winning team. So many congratulations for those winning teams, and I hope you guys do enjoy your day out. Or yeah. well, I'm <laughs> just coming for the food. To be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> remember, <laughs> it's going to be nice and spicy, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What um, we're talking about, uh, just general housekeeping stuff. Um, one of the things I just want to touch about where Harris is here as well. <clears throat> he looks after our car parking side of things and stuff. Uh, there have been a couple of issues here and there. Generally, generally things are good. Uh, Harris is on it um, and there isn't any issues. But once or twice here and there, you get a couple of people, even though Harris is telling them there's no space, guys, people still seem to sort of like trying to rush in and stuff. Guys, we understand eight o'clock kickoffs. You want to be there uh, with your team, warm up, listen to a team talk and stuff. But just understand the reason we've, we've kind of put this in place is because we've had issues in the past where um someone has been seriously injured or uh i think there was a case of someone um once had a uh, serious yeah, illness as well and um the ambulance couldn't actually get in mm. uh to the car park um you know and these are the issues and then again you get issues from like uh people who have had previous sessions and when sometimes you get silly and double park these people can't get out um, so the reason we've got this in place now where Harris monitors the car park and stuff. So just wanted to say, people, just be respectful of that, guys. Uh, I know, like I said, generally we're good, but sometimes you get a couple of people who are just, um, just you know, blocking people in and stuff like that. Uh, you know, so just as, as you drive in, just, just bear in mind, we've got Harris in place. Just listen to him, guys. Honestly, uh, it just makes things flow. Yeah, just makes things flow smoothly. The other thing, just touching on that as well, is um, car share drive. You know, go in with yeah, if you, you can, yeah, why not? Yeah, just share drive and you know, just ask a friend to pick you up or some vice mm. versa and taking turns. It just doesn't need everyone to sort of bring their cars there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so on that note, I would like to thank our member committee members. Um, thank you all guys really appreciated it today um, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, listeners. Um, I hope you enjoyed our podcast. Um, please, please, please do listen in and we look forward to hearing, well, listening to, speaking to you next... Next um, podcast, yes. Thank you very much. Take care. Now. Cheers. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.